day by day, there, there's a lot of good things uh, that they're revealing. There's a lot of work left to do. You know, we're still not timed up in the run game yet. Uh, we definitely got to go to work in pass pro in regards to uh, just fundamentals and technique. Um, but they're giving great effort, all right? It's just a matter of putting, a, you know, putting that effort along with some fundamentals and technique to get game ready. Sure. So we still got our work cut off for us. Stan, where, where did the mumps put Chris in terms of his evolution this summer? Yeah, you know, it, it, it pushed him back a little bit. You know, he wasn't the only one, but, uh, you know, he missed a couple of days in the weight room, a couple of days on the field, but uh, um, he's made up that time. And, you know, you, you miss a workout here, you still got to make it up. So he made up his time and, you know, he's, he's functional. Do you expect him, are y'all going into this wanting a bell cow type of guy or do you envision balance carries? I wish I had a bell cow right now, to yeah. be quite honest with you. You know, right now I got a committee of backs uh, competing for a spot. Uh, I don't think a bell cow has emerged at this point. Um, um, but again, this, the, the competition is good. You know, at some point somebody's going to separate themselves, but we're not at that point yet. What if, what, what's Kyle Porter done that's been so impressive? Carmen always speaks globally. Well, the one thing about Kyle Porter is that uh, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. You know, uh, systematically he's sound. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. So with that being said, he's able to play fast. You know, he's actually playing faster than everybody in the room because of you know, his knowledge of the system. But uh, he still has a lot of work to do now. You know, I'm not ready to anoint uh, Kyle Porter. He's got a lot of work to do. Um, uh, we're missing some reads and spots. And, uh, you know, fundamentally, he's got a long way to go. Did you watch film of, of last year? Did you watch any of his games from last I did, year? I did. What are some of the improvements you think he's made? Well, you know, I think uh, he, he's gotten better in, 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 in smaller spaces. You know, I thought that he was a little bit of a, a one-speed back. I think he's, uh, you know, quickened himself up and become a little bit more elusive in tight spaces. Um, he needs to become more of an explosive back. So, um, you know, when he sees a hole, he needs to be able to trust his read, trust his eyes, and, and get the full speed quicker. You know, I think he's kind of oozing into it as opposed to bursting through the hole. And uh, if, he, if he can kind of get that part of his game on point, he'll become more of an explosive back. You'll see more big pace com uh, plays coming out of him Kirk's with that mindset. Kirk's obviously battled through so many injuries. Is it where do you see him fitting in? Uh, you know, he's, he's just getting back, you know, so uh, he's, he's got to learn the system. You know, he's one of those guys who is behind that way. He hadn't had a whole bunch of practice reps. So, you know, he's playing slow in spots. You know, he's uh, um, he's giving great effort, okay, but he's playing slow. The reads are not there. You know how it is. I mean, you got to – these guys need reps. You know, he's not timed up in anything yet, not the run game or the pass game. So um, it's still a lot to learn. I still have a lot to learn in regards to Kurt Johnson. How do you raise him as pass protectors? Uh, we're, we're very average to below right now. Really? Um, yeah, you know, it's just fundamental. You know, they're yeah. aggressive, you know, and, and that's one of the toughest things and the longest thing to develop for a running back. You know, you teach them how to, you know, run the ball with great pad leverage as a lean, all right, and it's, you have to contradict that teaching when it's time to pass pro. They got to be a little bit more patient. They got to kind of sit back uh, in reverse arc, and, you know, so it's contradictory teaching. So that's the longest thing to develop for all of them. Uh, we're making strides. We had a better day today. Um, but um, uh, I'm expecting them to be much better than where we are right now. Uh, right now, I would say uh, the most consistent at it right now, I would probably say between Chris and Kyle, I flip a coin. As far as Warren, what, what's he doing well and what does he need to do to become the bell cow? Well, I think the, 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 the thing that he's doing the best right now is he's respecting the game. All right. Um, uh, he's been a little bit of a lethargic football player in the past in regards to practice. I think he's becoming a better practice player. All right. And uh, I think he needs to continue to do that uh, for the rest of his career. Uh, play the game on the practice field. And I think that's been the biggest improvement. And it's, it was the biggest need for improvement uh, going into training camp. And what drew you to Beck philosophically when you guys sat down in the offseason? I'm sorry, one more time. What drew you to Tim Beck philosophically oh, when you sat down in the offseason? Uh, you know, Tim Beck's a, uh, a real guy, first of all, all right? He's a real guy. He's a very unselfish guy. Uh, he designs our offense uh, with every position in mind, okay? Uh, obviously, being a quarterback, we got to fit our quarterback. Everything needs to be custom fit for our quarterback, all right? But he has a very uh, unique way of making sure all the other pieces to the puzzle are in place and aligned with that. Uh, the one thing that I love about him, that he, uh, he's all about learning who we are as a football team. And we're not just going to run a system that doesn't fit our talent. You know, he has the awareness to fit our scheme that fits our talent. 
And that's the one thing that uh, really attracts me to him, and that's what's, that's why we're going to have success because of that. How's, how's Tonell Carter look? Tonell's looking good. You know, Tonell, you know, um, he's, got, he's got some growing up to do. You know, uh, the one thing I do know about Tonell, he loves to play football. He loves it out there, you know. So I get pretty consistent energy from him every single day. Um, he's the one guy that I believe he, he, if he gets a crease, he can hit a home run for you, you know. Um, um, but he's still got a lot of work in regards to learning schemes. He needs to be a guy that can get on the board and draw the play to the point to where he feels comfortable with the play and, and transfer that into execution where there's no processing going on. There's still a little bit of processing going on in regards to his play. So we're not seeing what he's fully capable of doing right now. He got the best hands of all your running backs? Uh, he's got good hands. Uh, you know, Danny Young's got good hands. Kyle's pretty solid. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a guy that has exceptional hands in that group right now, but they're, they're all pretty solid. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. spring, it seemed like Tom was not happy with um, Tennille and maybe as many times as he's putting it on the ground. Yes. Has he, has he improved? That over the last couple months? Well, if, if there's some wood around here, I would knock on it. He hasn't put it on the ground as of yet, you know, um, but there are still some clips on film that you see where he's a threat to put the ball on the ground, you know, so that's a, that's a mental focus. That's a mental toughness, you know. He's got to get, you know, uh, that is our culture. We don't put the ball on the ground in order to win ball games, and he's got he's to embrace that. And I'm not saying that he's fully embraced in that respect yet, but it's getting better. Stan, a lot of when, when uh, Sterling Gilbert got here last year, everybody assumed that the passing offense, that there wouldn't be much running. And then, you know, Deontay had 2,000 yards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how would you say that the run, ba run pass balance in this offense is going to go? Yeah, if you look at Tom, uh, Tom Herman's history, you know, and Bex, you know, it's, it's always been a pretty balanced offense, uh, leaning more on the side of the run, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and that does include some quarterback run game and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, we, we plan to be balanced. I don't, I don't think we're good enough to be one-sided, you know, to sit there and say that we're going to sit back and throw the ball a uh, large percentage, percentage of the time and have high percentage uh, success. I, I, I don't think that's the case. I mean, we have got to balance the run with the pass for sure. If you find the bell cow, you're looking like 25 carries a game. Uh, okay. The way I work in that respect, if, if he has a hot foot, he stays in, you know, and then it becomes a conditioning, an endurance thing, right? right. You know, um, uh, how far can he go? That's, that's what I'm trying to gauge now. So every day, these guys are getting more and more consecutive reps, all right, to see how far can they go. You know, it started off with two reps. Now it's going to three. Now we're giving guys four reps just to try to get them game ready, you know, that endurance for the game situation. So uh, it's, it's predicated on endurance and, 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 and toughness and things of that sort. Um, but uh, I think, uh, you know, even with the bell cow, uh, bell cow is a bell cow because he has a good guy behind him, you know, to take the pressure off. And, and you know, I'm more focused on and, uh, developing the whole entire group. So when their number is called, whoever it is, uh, they're ready to go and be that bell cow in that moment. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from Daniel Young? Uh, you know, Daniel Young's got natural pad level, some natural instincts. Uh, he's, he's very tough runner, you know, big body type uh, that can accelerate a little bit, you know, um, Still green, you know, still green. I mean, he's learning the system. The one advantage that Tanil has is that he was here, you know, in the spring, and Danny was not, you know. But Danny has closed that gap uh, rather quickly. Uh, he learns well, and uh, the one thing I can say is coming from Westfield, they run a very similar system, so some of that stuff is carrying over for Danny. Tom said that both Tanil and Danny would play some this year, but yeah. there's only one ball. Do you expect those guys to be on special teams, and what do you expect from your running backs? Uh, just so you know, uh, here at the University of Texas, uh, if you're a starter, uh, that means you're starting on a special team. All right, we're, we're going to put our best players on special teams. So if you haven't earned a spot or some value on special teams, regardless of how good you are in your position group, uh, you're not going to play. And that carries over for my groups as well. Yeah. So pretty much everybody on the special teams is starting yeah, you, somewhere you, else. You have to be a value on special teams to play uh, your position on offense. So endurance is even more important. Absolutely. You feel Absolutely. like because of your personality, you'll be more two back or one back or yeah I think we're going to do a little bit of, uh, of both you know I think we um, uh, have the capability of doing both I mean when you have big backs like Chris Warren Danny Young and those are guys that allow you to get into some two back stuff and uh, you know do some creative things but uh, you know primarily we're a one back team all right but uh, we're, we're going to be as creative as we can be within the you know uh, talent level of our team Stand time on. for two last ones uh, off the field. Uh, do, do you have different responsibilities being an associate head coach? Yeah, yeah. Danny Wood is just a normal running back. Well, yeah, you know, Tom Herman expects me to, to carry the, the, you know, carry the, the weight, you know, uh, when he's not looking, you know, and he expects that of every coach, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, he really does. I mean, there's times where 
Um, if he leaves the meeting or anything like that, uh, he expects me to take over that situation. Uh, that hasn't happened a whole lot. Tom is always around, you know, okay. but um, I know what my role is and I'm ready for that uh, responsibility when the time comes. Um, but um, right now, my, my job is to uh, make sure our culture is intact on both sides of the ball and uh, to make sure my running backs get better. Stan, from a, from a recruiting perspective, when you went not just in the state, but you went around the country this spring to recruit. Yeah. How were kids, how did you find kids receptive to the Texas brand and what's your take? I know you can't talk about recruits specifically, yeah. but your take just on the start you guys have had before you even Very respect. I mean, they, 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 they like Texas. They know what Texas is. And uh, that's the beauty when you go out of state and, and you do wear the burnt orange, uh, they have a, a, an immediate respect for the program. All right, they, they, they have an understanding of the history, which was very surprising for me. Uh, this young generation of kids really don't care so much about tradition anymore. They're all about living in the now, and I get that. But um, when I went out across the country looking at these backs, they, they had an understanding of our tradition here, uh, which was very exciting for me. All right, so, but we have a lot of interest out there across the country from some of the top backs in the country, and uh, we'll see how those chips fall at the time. Thanks, Coach.